Hi, welcome to The Wire's Facebook channel. I am Vrinda Sood and today we are here in The Wire office talking to Mr. Siddharth Vadarajan, the founding editor of The Wire. And we are here to talk about the very famous uh, uh, case which is currently in, which was until today in the International Court of Justice, uh, talking about Kulbhushan Yadav and how the verdict has been ruled in India's favour for the time being. Uh, the ICJ, as we all know, has made the decision to stay the execution of uh, the Indian spy Kulbhushan Yadav and, um, uh, till the final decision is to be made. And here we are talking to Mr. Vadarajan about uh, this decision. Uh, could you summarize the case for yeah. us, sir? Yeah. Um, the ICJ decided today, uh, the operational part of his verdict, which was watched all over the world, it was shown live on uh, the UN uh, internet TV channel, mm -hmm. uh, and Judge Ronnie Abraham was the president of the ICJ. Uh, the operational part that he, he read out was that uh, until the court, the ICJ, uh, decides finally on uh, India's uh, appeal before the ICJ in the Kulbush and Jadav matter, Pakistan will not carry out the death sentence that it has imposed. Secondly, that Pakistan has to inform the court of uh, the steps that uh, it has taken uh, to comply with the court's order in this case. So, uh, broadly speaking, the uh, immediate relief that India sought, which is uh, given the urgency of the matter, the fact that um, Kulbushan Jadhav, uh, who is a former Indian naval officer, accused of espionage, convicted of espionage, but somebody uh, whom the Indian government does not accept uh, is a spy. Right. Um, uh, the um, you know I, the uh, fear in India was that Pakistan would carry out the death sentence right. uh, before uh, India's complaint could be heard uh, or adjudicated on by the ICJ. And so, what the court decided today was uh, essentially an indication of provisional measures. Mm -hmm. The provisional measure being that until the court decides on the merits of the case as a whole. Pakistan will not carry out its death sentence. So, uh, so I want to emphasize to, to viewers that uh, this is a, a complicated and two-stage process in a way. Uh, the court has still not ruled mm -hmm. on what it calls the merits of the case. So um, the claim by India that Pakistan has violated its obligations under the Vienna Convention on mm -hmm. Consular Relations uh, and, uh, and so on and so forth uh, is all uh, uh, something that the court will... Uh, go into now in some detail. Right. India and Pakistan will make more elaborate legal arguments mm -hmm. uh, at a date uh, to be fixed. And typically, the process of hearing the merits of a case and deciding a verdict uh, on average run anywhere from three to four years. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, since uh, the case that India filed, uh, you know, is going to take that long, India had asked the court to uh, give provisional measures so that uh, it could ensure that whatever verdict the court uh, pronounces three or four years down the road will not have become infructuous by mm -hmm. Pakistan carrying out its death sentence uh, before mm -hmm. then, right? So, so essentially uh, what India wanted was provisional measures mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the way in which Judge Ronnie Abraham couched everything that he said today mm -hmm. was he was very clear that, uh, um, you know, he kept prefacing what he was saying by the words at this stage, at this stage. Mm. So this, so he was making it clear that the ICJ is looking at uh, India's uh, request for provisional measures, mm. and uh, he kept saying that we aren't going into the full merits of the case. Right. But at this stage, uh, India's arguments uh, carried more water than mm. Pakistan's, and hence uh, it uh, issued its order, which is that Pakistan, uh, for the duration of the hearing mm -hmm. and the case, until a final decision will not carry out its death sentence. So I think that's the big uh, news out of the ICJ today. That's the, that's right. the, 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 the primary order. Mm -hmm. uh, the case, uh, as far as quote-unquote the merits are concerned, will carry on right. now for a few years. Um, it's interesting that you say that he prefaced this again and again by saying that at this stage, this is the verdict, and at this stage, this should be done, and these were provisional measures. Do you think that the fact that India's... Um, uh, India's case held more water this time was because of the fact that the confessional video, so as to say, by Pakistan was not allowed to be played in there. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think the, the confessional video, uh, which Pakistan attempted to play right. on the 15th, 
uh, and the court was not happy with that mm -hmm. suggestion and in fact said, no, you cannot show the video here. Right. I think it gave, it gave an early indication perhaps right. of, uh, of what the court, uh, which way the court was leaning. Right. I think that it was uh, an act of supreme folly for, for Pakistan to have even wanted to present that video. Because even for people untrained in the fine arts of video editing, uh, it was apparent that, uh, it is apparent when you watch that video, that uh, it's been edited in several places. You have many right. jump cuts. Uh, there isn't uh, the kind of continuity you would expect if a confession uh, was made freely, fairly, and in a spontaneous fashion. So it right. was clearly a very heavily tutored uh, confession, quote unquote, that Kulbushan Jadav made in that video tape. Mm -hmm. And uh, leaving aside the fact that he was uh, in custody at that time under circumstances right. that nobody knows, uh, for Pakistan to even I have imagined hmm. that uh, this kind of video evidence, yeah. this kind of a taped confession would uh, hold any water mm. uh, before uh, a bench of, of 15 seasoned judges from around the world, mm. I think was an act of folly. Uh, but to come to the, uh, the substantive uh, issues that Pakistan argued uh, you know, in, in the court, uh, when the hearing took, when oral arguments took place on on May 15th, Pakistan questioned uh, the jurisdiction of the court right. on, on two grounds. And it's interesting that today uh, Judge Abraham uh, essentially refuted both of those grounds. He, he, uh, he uh, said that neither argument that Pakistan advanced uh, held any water. And I think it would be useful for our viewers to just go through what those two arguments were. Yes. Pakistan began by um, suggesting that uh, the Vienna Convention on Consular Relations, which Pakistan and India are parties to, uh, and the optional protocol uh, to the Vienna Convention, which is a supplementary treaty, if you will, mm. uh, which India and Pakistan have signed, as have many other countries. Right. And what the optional protocol does in its very first clause is to, uh, is to say that in the event of a dispute between two countries on the application or interpretation of the Vienna Convention on Consular Relations, mm. Uh, the International Court of Justice will have compulsory jurisdiction. So in a way, India and Pakistan, uh, in acceding to the Vienna Convention and its optional protocol many years ago, well before this dispute, mm -hmm. had, uh, had conceded that the ICJ would be the forum where any dispute mm -hmm. over, uh, 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 over the implementation of the Vienna Convention would be heard. Okay. So that issue, uh, uh, even though there was a suggestion uh, from the Pakistani side, that um, in its latest declaration on uh, accepting the compulsory jurisdiction of the ICJ, Pakistan had, had uh, uh, included national security mm -hmm. as uh, one of the grounds uh, on which it would not accept uh, the ICJ's jurisdiction. Right. Uh, but that was a part of its general declaration on accepting compulsory jurisdiction. And Ronnie Abraham, in his, uh, uh, in his remarks today, said that the fact that India and Pakistan are both parties to the optional mm. protocol yeah. means that the ICJ Prime FAC has jurisdiction and we are now going to proceed to discuss the arguments that Pakistan made. Mm -hmm. And there were two, as I said, two arguments Pakistan made. The first was that the Vienna Convention, mm -hmm. which ordinarily stipulates through uh, uh, Article 36 mm -hmm. that um, the, uh, uh, a country which holds prisoner Mm -hmm. uh, the national of another country right. uh, is obligated to provide diplomats from that country access to that prisoner. Right. So this is the right. this is the principle of consular access. Yes. That that if if there's a say a Korean national who is arrested in India, mm -hmm. the Korean embassy in New Delhi uh, has the right under the Vienna Convention to be able to visit its national yes. in Indian custody. Uh, India is obliged to inform Korea that we have arrested this chap. Right. We are obliged to, at every stage, inform uh, the, the, the government of that national of uh, all the legal steps that we are taking. Mm -hmm. So under the Vienna Convention, Pakistan, India argued that Pakistan ought to have, A, informed India as soon as it arrested Jadav, mm -hmm. which was on March 3rd, uh, 2016. Right. Uh, Pakistan informed India only at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. So there was a delay of 20 odd days. 20. Secondly, Pakistan ought to have given Indian diplomats access uh, to Jadhav while he was in Pakistani custody. And India requested access on 16 occasions, 16. and each time Pakistan denied. essentially denied that. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Pakistan should have uh, allowed India to provide legal assistance if it so desired mm. to Kulbushan Jadhav to help him fight his case. That also was not 
a right that was given to India uh, under, uh, you know, as far as Pakistan's obligations are under the Vienna Convention. And Pakistan took the view, which it said in the court, that the reason we didn't do this is because the Vienna Convention was not designed to uh, be made available for persons accused mm -hmm. of espionage or acts of terror, right? right? So Pakistan took the view that the right to uh, consular access mm -hmm. that India has vis-a-vis -vis its nationals in Pakistani custody would be confined to those Indians who are arrested for quote-unquote ordinary crimes right? and not crimes of terrorism or espionage, right. which are the crimes that they accused mm -hmm. Kulbushan Jadav of committing. And uh, Ronnie Abraham, mm -hmm. uh, the judge, the presiding judge, said that there is no uh, provision in the Vienna Convention mm. which excludes people accused of espionage or terrorism right. from the protection that the Vienna Convention uh, provides. Right. So that argument of Pakistan, mm -hmm. that because Jadhav is an accused spy, because he is uh, accused of committing acts of terror, hence he cannot be uh, given the protection of the Vienna Convention, this was rejected. And the second argument that uh, Pakistan had put forward, which the court also uh, rejected, was that the, under the terms of a 2008 bilateral agreement that India and Pakistan had signed on uh, consular access to prisoners, there, there is a clause which says that in the event of prisoners accused of, um, you know, in, in the event of security and, I forget the exact phrase, but in the event of political or security considerations, right. uh, the <coughs> arresting government mm -hmm. can decide on access on merits. So, uh, in a way, the 2008 agreement, the bilateral agreement, envisaged the possibility of consular access being denied mm. if a person was accused of, quote-unquote, political or security offenses. And Pakistan said the fact that we have this bilateral agreement mm -hmm. trumps our commitment uh, under the Vienna Convention uh, and hence India approaching the ICJ and saying that the ICJ should uh, rule because it has jurisdiction is not, is not valid uh, because the bilateral agreement uh, in a way supersedes. Does the, it? Uh, the, yeah, so the court said that it doesn't. Right. The court, well, l l let me rephrase. Uh, again, the, the, what you said, the uh, at this time, right? right. So, so, so Ronnie Abraham said, at this time, uh, we uh, are of the view that the 2008 agreement, mm -hmm. because it contains no provision, right. which says that it uh, 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 replaces or supersedes the Vienna Convention uh, on consular relations, uh, uh, hence we do not accept the argument that Pakistan has, right. has advanced, mm -hmm. that the 2008 agreement uh, in a way uh, invalidates the jurisdiction of the ICJ. So on, on this second point also, uh, Pakistan did not get any relief, uh, did mm -hmm. not uh, find its arguments uh, being accepted. And the court said, we have jurisdiction. Uh, the fact that uh, India brought this case and Pakistan is contesting it means that there is a dispute between the two countries uh, on um, the application or interpretation of the Vienna Convention. And hence, we have jurisdiction. And having established that it has jurisdiction, mm -hmm. uh, Judge Abraham then moved on to consider a third issue, right. which is that, uh, uh, is there uh, an urgency to the matter, right? The issue of urgency was raised uh, right from the outset when mm, India definitely. moved the court in the first place because uh, the government of India said that there's always a danger if you don't rule quickly right. uh, in Pakistan carrying out this death sentence, mm -hmm. uh, and which would then render any relief that we want from the mm. court uh, infructuous. Right. Pakistan took the view that there is no urgency. Uh, and its argument before the court on May 15th was that uh, there is a, uh, a time limit, a time mm -hmm. period. So Pakistani law gives a convict uh, on death row, uh, I think something like 150 days to right. file an appeal. And after he files his appeal, it goes through a couple of other stages. Finally, there's the possibility of clemency. Mm -hmm. And uh, they assured the court that there is no question of um, Kulbushan Jada being hanged before the expiry of that, that period, 150 days. Now, interestingly, Pakistan advanced that argument, right. hoping to convince the court that there is no urgency for an order today or tomorrow or the next month, uh, because there's a time period of 150 days. What Pakistan right. didn't f factor was that uh, once the court admits that it has jurisdiction, mm -hmm. uh, and given the fact that cases take on average three or four years, uh, the fact that Pakistan says we won't hang him in one within 150 days, is of, uh, is of no consequence, right? Because, right. It, because and, 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 and Judge Abraham, uh, Abraham said today that, uh, you know, what happens if 
uh, the court does not take a final decision right. before the expiry of that 150-day deadline. Right? Mm -hmm. So in a way, Pakistan's argument uh, confirmed the fact that there is an urgency right. to the matter. Mm -hmm. uh, so that argument went against Pakistan's interest. And you know, uh, in sum, the judge ruled that um, India's request for, uh, for urgent provisional measures mm -hmm. to, prevent the, uh, uh, to prevent irreparable damage to uh, uh, its its uh, to the remedy that it was seeking, right. this was valid, and it accordingly directed Pakistan to put on hold the death sentence mm -hmm. until final disposition of the case. And right. I think that's the major uh, major uh, you know verdict which has come out uh, today, which uh, I think is considerable cause for cheer, not just among uh, the Jada family, right. but uh, the government of India, which uh, and and the Ministry of External Affairs, which took in many ways, this unprecedented decision to go to the ICJ. Right. Uh, so they would feel vindicated. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a victory for, for, the, uh, for the rule of, of law at the international level. Because it's, you know, to have an international institution relying on international law uh, to say that as of now, uh, the, uh, you know, the death sentence pronounced on uh, Jadav cannot be carried out. I think this is, uh, I, would, I would look at this as a victory for law. Definitely. Uh, we have a few questions here from our viewers. Uh, we have Rishabh Watts asking, has consular access been granted? There was no explicit, explicit mention of the same. Yeah, that's uh, an excellent question, Rishabh. Uh, the, uh, whether or not Pakistan should grant consular access right. uh, to Jadhav uh, now is an issue that uh, actually will be addressed, I would imagine, uh, in the uh, arguments in the court before the court on what are called the merits of the case. Right. And I would imagine that whatever verdict comes out, mm -hmm. let's say that the uh, the verdict, the final verdict of the court, right, is that uh, Pakistan violated its commitments under mm -hmm. the VCCR, under the Vienna Convention, right, uh, in denying India access, and hence uh, its uh, its death sentence in some ways, the the trial and death sentence imposed was in some ways invalid. Uh, I would imagine that the court would suggest would recommend, would order at the end of its final, you know, final hearing, mm -hmm. which would come perhaps two or three or four years down the road, right. that Pakistan should grant, grant consular access. I don't, I, I, I uh, there was nothing in today's order mm -hmm. that um, uh, obliges Pakistan to grant consular access, although I would imagine that if Pakistan sees the writing on the wall and right. looks at uh, the fact that today's verdict was unanimous, and I want mm -hmm. to underline this for viewers, that the ICJ bench consists of 15 judges. Uh, there is an Indian judge on the bench, so no surprise about which way he would have voted. But there is also a Chinese judge on the bench. China is, as they say, a, you know, a hard and fast ally of Pakistan. of Pakistan. And even though one, one would imagine that, that uh, decisions at this level mm -hmm. uh, are taken on legal grounds only, bias, yes. but there is uh, obviously a political element. And you know, we know in the past that all major cases that come before the ICJ it's uh, invari uh, invariably the case that uh, judges from their own countries tend to side with their with their their country's case. So, right. in in the in the ICJ verdict against Nicaragua, for example, right. in 1986, the United States judge uh, was the one judge who dissented mm -hmm. and who 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 said no, uh, the U.S. was not complicit in in, in mining Nicaragua's right. harbors. Right. So the fact that today's verdict was unanimous right. and which included the Chinese judge, mm -hmm. which included judges from other countries which perhaps with whom Pakistan has good relations right. uh, is a signal to the Pakistani state, the Pakistani military, that you can't take uh, uh, the rule of law at the international level for granted. Exactly. Right? Within your country, you have, you have domestic jurisdiction, but if you're going to uh, 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 play footloose and fancy free with the rules of international law, especially as they would apply to a foreign national, mm. then uh, be prepared to be held accountable. And that's precisely what has happened today. So I would imagine keeping in mind the spirit of today's verdict, uh, Pakistan would be well advised to grant okay. India consular access. I can think of many political reasons why they wouldn't want to do that. Uh, uh, the, the, the main one being that, and this is the reason why they never gave India access in the first place, mm -hmm. which is that India disputed from day one mm -hmm. the circumstances under which Jadhav came happened to come into Pakistani country. Right. Right? Pakistan said that Jadhav is an Indian spy. He is an operative of uh, RAW, which is the Indian External Intelligence Agency, that he was involved in funneling arms and other assistance to Balochi separatists, that he was involved in acts of terror, and was apprehended, in a way red-handed, mm -hmm. uh, meeting uh, accomplices inside 
Pakistani Balochistan, right? That's the right. Pakistani claim. The Indian view is that he was kidnapped uh, from Iran and hustled across the border and then shown as having been arrested in Pakistan. Now, the first thing that would be established, hmm. if an Indian diplomat were to be able to meet Jadhav, mm -hmm. and if Jadhav uh, were to realize that he can speak freely, right? Until now, everything that he said has been said under duress. Under duress or certainly, you have to imagine that there is duress because he's in Pakistani custody. Right. He has been denied access to diplomats from his country. Right. He's been denied access to his own family. He's been denied access to his own counsel. Mm -hmm. So nothing that he says mm -hmm. uh, can be uh, taken at face value. And when Indian diplomats have a chance to visit Jadhav and establish through his version of events the circumstances under which he was arrested, right. it's quite possible that the story which emerges will uh, uh, blow the Pakistani case or the Pakistani claim out of the water. Mm -hmm. And that's precisely why perhaps Pakistan never wanted to give access. Mm -hmm. And even now, until it is compelled to by the ICJ, I wonder whether Pakistan would actually grant access uh, now, even though the death sentence has been stayed till the end of uh, the ICJ's final hearings, which, as I said, would take three or four years. Right. Uh, we have another question here from Shreyoshi Mukherjee. Curious. Is it under ICJ's jurisdic jurisdiction to turn down Pakistan's verdict? Wouldn't Pakistan object to ICJ's intervention? Uh, thank you, uh, Shreyoshi. Another good question. Uh, the ICJ is not turning down the verdict. Right. right? Uh, the ICJ is not empowered to, to question the uh, competence of a Pakistani court. Right. Even a field general court martial, which is the, 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 the legal forum, the military court which tried... Uh, 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 Commander Jadhav or retired Commander Jadhav. Uh, but uh, what the ICJ can do is to adjudicate on whether Pakistan fulfilled its obligations uh, under international law right. when it comes to arresting mm -hmm. and putting on trial a foreign national. Right. So the Vienna Convention, which Pakistan acceded to, uh, I think, in the 60s, and the optional protocol to the Vienna Convention, uh, constitute... Um, treaty obligations right. that Pakistan uh, voluntarily and willingly entered into mm -hmm. uh, uh, and which, gov which have to govern the way in which foreign nationals who are arrested have to be treated. Right. So if uh, India can establish before the ICJ and if the ICJ accepts that mm -hmm. Pakistan violated its obligations under the ICJ mm -hmm. uh, in a way that would uh, put a big question mark over the validity of the criminal trial which, uh, which uh, Pakistan or Pakistan's military conducted. Right. Uh, if I could borrow uh, an American legal phrase from uh, you know, uh, ordinary criminal law in the US, uh, they have a phrase, fruit of the poison tree. Right? Right. So, so in other words, uh, you have a trial, a criminal trial, where evidence which was improperly uh, gathered uh, is used, or if 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 the, if the police search a place without a warrant, or mm. acquire information in an illegal method, right. that information cannot be used uh, against somebody in a trial. Right. So, in a way, this process is slightly analogous to that mm -hmm. uh, by holding the circumstances under which Jadhav was put on trial, mm -hmm. um, by 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 questioning the circumstances under which Jadhav was put on trial, the ICJ, uh, in a way. Uh, uh, will send a message to Pakistan mm -hmm. uh, that uh, the conduct of the trial right. and hence its outcome right. is, uh, has been fatally compromised. And that uh, if you, uh, without uh, questioning Pakistan's right to try people mm -hmm. for, for crimes that it, it alleges were committed on, on its territory, right. uh, uh, the ICJ will essentially tell Pakistan that, look, uh, you're best advised to scrap this verdict, mm -hmm. grant India consular access as you are obliged to do under international law, right. and then hold another trial. So at no stage is the ICJ saying that Pakistan, you have no right to try him. Mm -hmm. At no stage is, is the ICJ saying that we are going to enter into an examination of the evidence against Jadhav, uh, which is another reason why it, it was not interested in watching that video, that so-called video. Right, right? exactly. Uh, so it's not part of the ICJ's competence mm -hmm. to uh, enter into the minutiae of uh, a criminal trial. But the ICJ uh, right. can and will hold uh, all countries um, responsible 
for any derogation or violations of their international obligations. And that's right. precisely what is uh, the first stage of that has happened today. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we will have to see where things go from here. All right. Okay. Uh, that's all we have for you today. Thank you, right. Mr. Badarajan. And thank you to our viewers. Uh, let's see where this verdict goes. And congratulations to the uh, Jada family. The Jada family. And the yes. NBA, yeah. yes, definitely. Thank you.